Nope, I'll just tuck it into my undies. Hey, everybody. All right, talk about the emotions. It was a very emotional night for me, and uh, as you can see, I was a little tentative. You know, I wanted to make sure that I secured the victory, and everyone says, you know, the decisionator, Ryan LaFlair, and I know, you know, I can't finish fights. Trust me, I wanted to finish the fight, and uh, I let, you know, I let my emotions get hold of me. As you can see, after the fight, I almost broke down a little bit, but uh, just happy that I got the win. I was a little disappointed in the stupid mistake I went for that crazy takedown. But at the end of the day, a win's a win, and uh, I want to fight again and keep it going. Volante said that, you know, just fighting you know, so close to home like this, they're very nervous when they're associated with that. Did you feel those in there? Oh, 100 percent. I never get nervous. I guess, uh, you know, my ADD normally plays in a positive effect when I fight because I just, don't, you know, tune out everything else and I just fight. But today I was just, you know, my father was at the fight for the first time. He's never been to one of my fights. I've been fighting since 2008. And uh, he's never been to my fight, so as soon as I walk out, as the first person I see. I'm like, well, I can't get knocked out in front of my dad. And uh, I was, I, you know, obviously I felt good, but I felt like my range and, and, uh, and my timing was a little bit off just because I wanted to make sure that I, uh, you know, didn't lose. It looked like you came pretty close to getting <laughs> Ah, man, a couple of those times I was kicking him and I wanted to hit, I wanted to land. I felt, I felt his skin like this much. I'm like, if I was two inches closer, he'd be sleeping. But, you know. Oh, after the first round, I was like, oh, all right, the warm-up's over, let's go. So the second round, I do it with my best round. Third round, I felt fine, but I kicked him in like the hip or the elbow. So my left foot was, was hurting me a little bit. Um, I didn't, wasn't, I wasn't feeling it, but I just knew that like, all right, I, you know, I can't throw that kick again because I'm, you know, I might shatter it and I might not be able to walk. So um, the second round, I felt the best. I still felt good going to the third. And then I, I don't know, I made a stupid mistake with that takedown. And, and I beat myself up about it. Did you talk to your, yeah. Did you talk to your dad after the fight? I haven't talked to him yet. I just kind of went straight to the doctor. They got stitched up and then took, did some interviews. What, what, what kind pictures. of feedback does he normally give you after a fight? My dad's the most If you met him, you would think that he's you know confident and secure guy, but he's uh, he's like the most nervous guy ever. You get you know you, you think he's like a 15 year old girl uh, when it comes to me fighting. So I'm curious to see what he was like. Did, to what extent did it excite you that? there to see it like yeah I want to impress them I like I said as soon as I walked out I'm like I'm always ready I'm game face on like let's go and I, the first person I see is standing up like tense I'm like oh man my dad's nervous I can't freaking and I'm thinking about it but at the end of the day a fight's a fight and you know if, you, if you're not worried about the opponent in front of you then you got more problems than that you know you gotta still gotta fight and guys, guys want to kick your butt did you have to talk him into coming to this one? No, he was like, this is it. It's in New York. You know, I finally, finally fight in New York because he knows how much I've, uh, I've lobbied and I, how dedicated I was to making it legal here in New York. Even before I was in the UFC, I was going on Hot 97 radio shows. I was doing everything you could do to get, to get it legalized in New York. And, uh, and now it's here. And, and my dad knows you know, that I dedicated my life to this. He knows that's how I support my family. And he was like, I got to be there. It wasn't even a, a thought. So it was never that he didn't support you being a fighter? No, always supported that. me. Yeah. You know, I've been an athlete my whole life. He's been in every wrestling match, every lacrosse game. He's always supported me. He just, you know, no one wants to see their, their kid get punched in the face. But he's accepted that it's a real sport and, uh, and you know, he believes in me and that, you know, helps me believe in myself too. Are you looking to get on that Buffalo court? I am. I'm looking. I, I think I'm good to go. I got a couple, you know, bruises, nothing crazy. I want to be able to, I want to stay active. One of my biggest problems I think I'm I'm the best in the world. One of my biggest problems I can't stay ha uh, healthy. I'm you know I fight one time a year because my hands injured, my knees injured. I think if I'm healthy and my and I'm active, no one's beating me. I mean you can say whatever you want. People you know I only decision guys, but wait until you see the best Ryan the flare because it's gonna you know it's gonna shock a lot of people. How difficult was it for you Ryan to not be on the MSG card? It was extremely difficult. You know that because that was that, but. What are you going to do? I can't beat myself about, about it. You know, I was hurt. I had the hand surgery. My doctor said, there's no way. I just barely made this fight. Like, my hand was hurting up until, like, last week, and now I finally, you know, it felt fine. So, you know, it was what it was. I got to watch it, and, you know, I was just happy that I was able to get on this card. Have you just come to terms with the fact that you're always going to be battling injuries? Do you think that at some point you will weather the storm, or is this just going to plague you your entire fighting career? 
you know, that's a great question, Ariel. I hope that I uh, that I that's past me now. I hope I'm, I'm a lot smarter now. Okay. If you ask any of my training partners, my coaches, I was always the guy who went 100%. My training camps were, it was like a, a battle fight, and now I understand, I know how to fight. I don't need to go out there and spar twice a week. I, you know, I know what I need to do now. I know to, how to preserve my body. I'm a veteran. I can honestly call myself a veteran now. So I know what you have to do to, to not get hurt. And if I get hurt in the fight, it's something that happens. But I think a lot of my injuries came from training. And now I know I calm myself down a little bit in training. Like I said, I know how to fight now. So I think from here, it's, uh, it's downhill from here. And, Hopefully, you know, getting that top ten, top five, and then they'll get that, make that title run. And you train, and obviously you trained with Henry Hooft. He was in your corner. Right. You were out in Florida, preparing for this, correct? Yeah. Well, I, I I did most of my camp here in New York. I have, I'm very fortunate that I have two great striking coaches, uh, Keith Trimble and Henry Hooft, who uh, they they talk to each other. They're both on the same page at all times. When I'm here, I focus a lot on boxing with Keith and uh, and a lot of you know co te technical combos and stuff. And when Henry's basics. You know, elbows in, hands up, hard kicks. So they, I take a little bit from both of them, and I, I, they both have been in my corner since day one. And honestly, I, I got the best of both worlds with them. You too. didn't get a sense though for the vibe out in Florida with him leaving the Black Zillions because you weren't there at all for this camp. No, I, I yeah, I, I've always been around. You know, I'm, I'm always back and forth. I don't, you know, I, I wasn't involved with any of this, the, the parting ways. Me and Henry, since his first time coming to. Uh, to America, I actually, that's when I first signed with uh, with Glenn. We both got there at the exact same time, so I've been with Henry since he's been there. Wow. And so I just had always had a you know, connection with him, so I kind of just went wherever he went. But I had, you know, I wasn't picking sides or anything. Okay, and, and just curious, now that it's done, would you have felt like maybe, you know, 10, 15 years from now, if you never got the opportunity to fight in New York in your home state, would this have been something that would have nagged at you? And um, now, is there a sense of relief that you finally got to do it? Ariel, 100%, like you said, it was, you know, the fact that I wasn't on that MSG card was yeah. something that it was like, no. But you know what, it's all the same. I, I was just happy that I was able, I'm the first fight here in Brooklyn. I'm ha you know, at first people were like, oh, you're on the, the fight pass prelims. You went from the main event to the, to the, the fight pass prelims. I was actually happy that I kind of made history here, the first fight in Brooklyn ever. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, honestly, I can kind of check something off the, over the bucket list. Awesome.